What's happening, guys? It's TJ. LSU, Dad. Got a great list for you. This is my top 10 defensive linemen in the SEC to watch. You better watch them. You better keep your eye on them. You take your eye off them. It's going to be bad news for your quarterback. And I base these kids not on not only on what they did last year, but whatever changes took places on your team that I feel will help or hurt their play. Could be a coach change, whatever. But here is my list of top 10 defensive linemen to keep an eye on. Number 10. Number 10, I'm going down to the swamp. The Florida Gators. Got a kid down there I love. Brian Cox Jr. That's it. Brian Cox Jr. Boy, look just like his daddy. Starting to play like his dad, right? Big time, big plays, right? Need him to come through, come through. Kid to even get in the backfield as a fullback. <laughs> I watched him do that a couple of times. I'm like, what they doing with Brian? What they doing with Brian Cox, baby man? They got him stuck in the backfield. Put that kid in the backfield, man, and ran a play. And just watch, he just boom, just, just you know, blow, just blew through a kid on, on a line of scrimmage. But he's he's a football player. He just he's a football player that just happened to play defense. But Brian Cox Jr. Man, I like him. Yeah, he's pedigree, but the kid is making a name for himself. That's why. That's why I think he's going to have a huge year in 2016. Got him down as number ten. Number nine. Number nine. Going to Arkansas for. Dietrich Wise, that's right, Dietrich Wise, number 48, this kid, man, this kid, they called his name back-to-back -back at Tiger Stadium last year, and it was bad, bad kid, had like back-to-back -back sacks on the quarterback, you ever wonder why I hate the read option, this, this kid right here, he is single-handedly the reason why I hate the read option, that, that stick the ball in, Take it out and the quarterback run with it. Well, our quarterback tried it and he popped him twice. Pop, pop, popped him twice. I said, hey, hey Cam, stop calling that play. <laughs> Did your wise? He's right there in the middle. And I'm telling you, he patrols the middle of that defensive line for Arkansas. And that's why he's on my list at number nine. Number eight. Number eight. Going to my LSU Tigers. I like Arden Key. That's right, kid. Ranked up five sacks, had 6.5 tackles for a loss as a freshman. <laughs> as a freshman, man. 38 tackles. And he's, you know, to, to recruit him like that, my, 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 my. Because we're going to add to that defensive line, Rashad Lawrence, which we we got up here from Neville High School. Thank you, Neville, because we're going to put that kid next to this kid, Arton Key. And that's the, hey, that's the foundation of a serious, serious defensive line. That's why I have him in at number eight. Number seven on my list, going right back to my LSU Tigers for Lewis Neal. 48 tackles, 9.5 for a loss, and eight sacks. Neil is the key to why the Tigers rank real good against the run. But now, man, this defensive line is shaping up real good. Then added a five-star recruit on side of these two brothers here, not to mention a few other kids that we already had at LSU. And I, it, and Lewis Neal gives me hope of a better day just to know that he is there and he is going to, he is going to be formidable right there on that line of scrimmage. I got him in at number seven on my list. Number six. Number six, everybody overlooked this kid. I didn't. <laughs> everybody ignored this kid. I didn't. Going to Mississippi State for A.J. Jefferson. Man, this, this young man, I'm telling you, this young man had 39 tackles, right? Five sacks, 13.5 tackles for a loss. <laughs> wow! You know? And if I fail to believe if they can get out of this 3-4, Lord Jesus, please, get out of this 3-4, put, put four 
people on the line of scrimmage, right? Put three, put another person on the line of scrimmage and help Jefferson out so this kid could get some of that good film because he's going to give you pressure up the middle. That's what he do, pressure up the middle. So, hey, hey, defense, uh, defensive coordinator Peter, Peter Sermon, get out of that 3-4, get in a 4-3 so this guy can have the year I expect him to have in 2016. Number five. Number five, I'm going to Ole Miss. That's right, Ole Miss. I like number 27, right? Marquez Haynes. Haynes, man, this kid quietly got 10 sacks, right? <laughs> 10. Finished four in the conference. with 16.5 tackles for a loss last year. He had 40, 43 tackles overall. But what I like about him is he can shut down a play. In particular, don't run no reverse don't run no wide receiver reverse. You're not gonna have time for it. Don't even don't do it, right? If you're if that counter, you're trying to do these counter delays with to your running back, you're not gonna have that kind of time, right? And your quarterback, you're not gonna be able to sit back there forever and let that route develop. Hey, I'm just letting you know, you got three, probably two and a half seconds to make up your mind what you're gonna do. That's why they do that little land shark thing. This kid here is a, is a perfect description of it. He's get there. He's gonna get to you fast with with some with some bad intentions. So he's on my list. Number four, number four on my list is a big bad defensive lineman right here from Missouri. I know y'all don't watch Mizzou football games, but I watch him. Right, Charles Harris led the SEC. With 18 tackles for a loss. <laughs> Kid had 56 tackles overall, man. 56. You know, Missouri had the, they had the most tackling dude in, in the country in Brothers. And on that same team with Brothers, this guy, this, this young man here, Charles Harris, was on that D-line. And he was a thing of beauty to watch. And I, I put him in on my list as number four. Number three. Number three. Down to my top three. Going to that ugly school in Tuscaloosa. For Jonathan Allen. Yep. Finished second in the conference with 12 sacks. Tied for six with 14 tackles for 14.5 tackles for a loss. He has some big bad brothers on side of him. <laughs> he has some big bad brothers. And some of them done. You know, the two of them I think I think should have went number one in the draft. Man, there's no way in the world, Robinson. It, 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 it was re in the world those brothers shouldn't have went number one because this D-line that Alabama had last year, man, was a thing of beauty. Was a thing that those four, those four monsters on that D-line, and this was one of those monsters. And I would have had him number one, save for the fact that I think that he's not going to sneak up on nobody this year. I think this kid is going to get doubled all kind of way. I don't care where you move him left or right, up and down the D-line, I, I think you're going to have two two guards and a fullback watching him at all time. We'll see how that affects his play this year. Number two. Number two on my list. Going to Texas A&M. I know they're not known for defense, but this one kid they got. My, 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 my. Miles Garrett. That's right. Miles Garrett led the SEC with 12 sacks. 12, 12 sacks, 19.5 tackles for a loss. 19.5. Right? This, this, this young man, man, he had 59 tackles overall, right? He's one of these this new style of defensive end where they just tall, lean, and, and fast, man. And before the offensive lineman can even get out of his they stance, this kid has already, he's already back there. He's, he, the speed at which he can get back there is, um, it's, it's just, it's not fair, man. It's not fair to these big old fat 300 and, and 40 pounds offensive linemen to have to get out of these stands quick enough to, to at least try to get a paw on this guy, right? And I'm telling you, unless, unless the offensive line are going to get skinnier, yeah, I don't see nobody really being able to stop him. SEC, it's going to be waiting on him this year. 
because of the year he had last year. So he's going to suffer from his own success a little bit. We'll see how he responds, and we'll see if he has some other help on that D-line to pick up some of these double teams. And now for my number one defensive lineman, the number one kid that I'm watching in 2016. He comes from Nashville, Tennessee, a city that has produced a lot of fame. While his classmates were going from boys to men, he arrived on the campus a grown man. And like a grown man, he started on the D-line from day one. A true record setter in every sense of the word. Set a record for tackles for loss as a freshman, 20.5. Led the SEC with 18 tackles for loss in conference games. Became the first freshman to start season opener on the defensive line. Led all true freshmen in the SEC in tackles with 72. Not only did he have 10 sacks as a freshman, this young man also had eight quarterback hurries along with a fumble recovery. All of that was his freshman year. Now fast forward to 2015. Kid had 69 tackles. He was nominated by the Associated Press All Bowl Team, ESPN All SEC Bowl Team, All SEC Coaches Team, All SEC AP Team, Pro Football Focus All American. Ah, that we just getting started in 2015. To top it off, he was All SEC GridironNow.com. Who am I talking about? To help me introduce him, I've invited Big Rod from the Tennessee Nation. Hit it! TJ, LSU Dad, you already know who the number one defensive lineman is in the SEC. None other than Dred Barnett. Let's go. That's right. That's right. My number one defensive lineman to watch in the SEC in 2016 is Tennessee defensive end. Derek Burnett. Kid has 69 tackles and 10 sacks. Why Derek Burnett? Because the kid is tenacious. His mother should have named him Relentless or Luke Skywalker because he knows how to use the force. This kid will vaporize a quarterback. I mean literally. Reduce him to particles. I have him ranked number one. It's the kid that I'm watching because he has what I call the three S's. Size, speed, and strength. Kid tackles all over the field. I love him. I think he's going to be the one that's going to be the reason Tennessee makes it to the SEC championship game. My number one, number one, number one defensive lineman to keep an eye on is Derek Burnett, Tennessee Volunteers. That's it, guys. That is, that is it. That's all I got. Derek Burnett. <laughs> Gonna be keeping an eye on this kid all year. All year long. I am looking forward to watching him vaporize. Vaporize some more quarterbacks in 2016. Guys, that's my list. That's my, that's all I got. I want to hear your list. I want to hear what you got. Put your list where your mouth is, right? If you think you can beat the list I got. Until next time. Until next time, I'm going to do the tight ends. That's right. Tight ends are next. On my top 10 kids to watch in the SEC in 2016, we're going to keep it going. Hey, we got to get to September somehow. TJ, LSU. Dad. <laughs>